Okay. Good evening, guys. Welcome back to Not So Late Night Show. Uh, this is a pre-recorded session, but nevertheless, we will hope that uh, today's company would be uh, an eye-opener uh, for all of you guys because this is a company that is going to uh, list in the Malaysian Stock Exchange. It is touted as the uh, most anticipated uh, IPO for the Malaysian stock market uh, ever since last year's uh, Mr. DIY IPO. Of course, if you haven't checked out Mr. DIY's IPO prospectus, uh, we will put the link up in the uh, top corner or the description box to link you there. Or you can search for it as well uh, at our Kaya Plus YouTube channel. So we will go through the business model of uh, CITOS and also the financials and also last but not least a little bit of our opinions and verdicts. Here you have it. Uh, if you are interested to join the Kaya Plus Premium Club, do sign up. Uh, we also in include the links in the description box and what is inside our Kaya Plus Premium Club. So you have access to a private invitation FB group and of course we will have a monthly private sharing session. Uh, Stock Plus 2022 uh, will also be a component uh, for our premium club offerings. And also we have premium articles and investing insights uh, analysis as well. And of course, if you have joined us via the Dividend Gems, uh, you will also be receiving a furnished uh, report on uh, a particular company that we have chosen uh, or you can suggest to us whether these companies pass the dividend uh, jam hurdles as well. Last but not least, uh, we also come up with a series of thematic uh, events and related webinars to actually up your investing game. So moving on, uh, this is actually one of the latest private videos that we have, which is uh, asking uh, why whether your investment thesis is sound or not and whether you are prepared for the worst case scenario whenever you invest in a company. And here are the latest uh, articles, premium articles that we have actually shared uh, post-pending, post-pending, post-mortem, which is uh, one year after the dip, buying the dip and holding through the uh, very uncertain period. And also uh, we have a dividend gems report for our local Malaysia stock exchange, some Malaysia per high. And of course, last but not least, thematic sharing. We have actually finished uh, electric vehicle ecosystem. Uh, for those who are the premium club members, you can actually uh, enjoy unlimited replay. The upcoming one would be regarding semiconductor. And uh, of course, if you just want to attend the individual event, it's one ninety nine. But uh, premium club members will enjoy the upcoming all thematic events for free. And of course, here is just a preview of what we'll be covering from design up to end consumer product and the companies that is included inside uh, the semiconductor sphere uh, will be ranging from the integrated device manufacturers up to the end stream assembly package and test players as well. Of course, here you have it, the upcoming uh, book the date, put your calendars if you're interested. It will be held on the 24th of July, uh, one day event, 10 a.m. It will be on a Saturday. And uh, just a peek of previously what we covered for electric vehicles. So you will have the lithium compound players, the auto parts components, and also the EV manufacturers and stuff. It is actually a very concise and uh, a complete list of companies to actually kickstart your coverage and your uh, understanding on EV before you actually pick a potential winner in this uh, very, very exciting investment space. And... Uh, of course, before I pass it to Chun Bing to kickstart today's uh, company of the night, here's a disclaimer. Of course, the company that we will be sharing will just be for entertainment and also sharing purposes. Please do not take it as a buy, call, and hold decision. And of course, uh, we urge you to actually do more research and study and analyzing the company uh, if you are interested. And uh, we hope you the very best if uh, you actually plan to actually invest in the company. So Chun Bing. CITOS, what does this company actually do? And uh, of course, I think a lot of us are familiar with the company, even though uh, it is not a listed company yet. Yeah, I think here you go. Uh, if you see the banner, I'm not sure whether you came across this banner before or not, but uh, technically what CITOS is in the business is they provide the services of, for you or the business to uh, get a report card of your credits related information. So, for example, uh, if you, a uh, person, you wanted to go after 
uh, let's say, to want to buy a house, but you just wanted to be sure that you are eligible or you can go for a certain range of loan, typically, CITOS is the source that uh, most of the people will go for. So this is how they make the money. They actually uh, curate the information from multiple uh, sources and then uh, put it up into a nicely uh, formatted report together with their own uh, scoring. And then this will help uh, the people like me and you to be able uh, to pass uh, the screening process, let's say by the bank, uh, when you wanted to uh, get a loan. Uh, and of course, some of the business, they also uh, onboard some merchants. For example, some payment gateway services, they wanted to make sure this is a legit business uh, with some uh, financial clean background or whatnot. They will typically tap on CITOS. And then CITOS actually uh, connect to quite a number of sources and this can help uh, business to actually make a right decision to whether uh, where they can onboard uh, this merchant or not. For example, some of the uh, business information coming from SSM, uh, of course, the key one are uh, the bank or financial record coming from Secrets uh, or backed by the Bank Nagara Malaysia. And they also curate some of the information uh, on whether this guy has some court cases or not. Uh, beyond that, uh, they also uh, connect to a couple of other uh, departments uh, in Malaysia. For example, Malaysia Department of Insolvencies, MDI, uh, the Registrar of Societies. This is more related to business information and so on. So this make up the report and this is how they actually uh, make the money out of it. So uh, you'll be asking then where is the main customer coming from? So uh, they are mainly coming from three uh, customer group. If you can see in the graph, uh, the main one is coming from commercial. 57% uh, of it uh, coming from, let's say, the guy from uh, uh, automotive or whatever industry. Uh, they, they wanted to actually screen the business before they give out the service to them. And then they also coming from uh, a few key accounts. They make up quite a bit of it. And then last but not least uh, is the one they're going through uh, to the people like me and you. So they call it the direct to consumer uh, segment. Uh, it's not big, uh, but then this is the three key group that make up the business. And of course, they got some of the uh, B2B services, meaning they sell the uh, services to some of the other uh, player uh, internationally uh, to enjoy the services uh, beyond Malaysia. And then uh, undoubtedly, I think CITOS should be the very clear leader uh, in the credit reporting industry in Malaysia. So uh, based on the estimated market share uh, in terms of revenue uh, in 2020, uh, CITOS actually owned up to 71.21%. And the rest is, let's say, some of the other players like Aspirin and so on. So it's a champion in this industry. And then uh, it's very hard for the other competitor to pick up. So this is where CITOS is in right now. And uh, due to the fact that they are into the business for quite long and then they are the market leader, so they also have a very diversified customer with typically very long uh, year of relationship. So this is some of the example put up in the IPO prospector documents, uh, some of it even, even up to 19 years uh, having the business relationship with them. So uh, you can see when you are in uh, the business with them, usually you will stick it for long. And then of course, uh, they are also telling you uh, as part of these uh, IPO uh, activities, they are having a couple of plans to expand uh, regionally and also uh, to multiple new verticals. So some of the highlighted one is something that they wanted to venture in, for example, the automotive uh, health and no automotive uh, insurance and also real estate, which is having a very good addressable markets uh, for the credit reporting industry. Uh, and then this is the graph that tell you uh, what is the CAGR percentage uh, that will be coming in between 21, 2021 to 2025. And of course, uh, beyond just Malaysia, uh, they also say uh, they are quite a promising uh, growth uh, space, uh, especially in the ASEAN region, which is closer to the Malaysia home ground. And then uh, they can actually tap on the growth uh, uh, from the other country to bring CITOS um, beyond the current level. Uh, and then of course, the one highlighted in black is where CITOS has their own presence right now. And then 
the rest is what where they plan uh, to go beyond. Of course, ASEAN is the one that we should look into uh, in details because it will highly related to their growth story in the futures. So this pretty much sum up uh, what business they are in right now and then what is the plan they have moving forward. Of course, uh, as part of the practice, we also have some financial information uh, that we plan to share it with you and I will pass it to Jupan to cover that uh, part. Okay, thanks, Junbeng. So, um, if you look at the latest three years uh, income statement and margin that uh, we have actually uh, obtained from CTOS uh, IPO prospectus, you will notice that this company is still growing uh, and uh, judging, even though by the fact they have already uh, almost 70% of the market share, but um, according to the market research and also uh, the prospect, that um, the management is painting is actually still a growing segment and uh, being one of the uh, key market leaders uh, in this kind of segment, uh, it is expected for CTOS to continue to grow. And if you just notice uh, in the year of uh, 2020, uh, where we were actually badly hit by the pandemic and uh, most of the companies actually reported uh, reduced uh, earnings and reduce uh, revenue, but CTOS was a company that uh, did not actually adhere to that kind of got impacted so badly as well. It still managed to uh, squeeze out a little bit of growth. And uh, of course, the earnings is also uh, tapping uh, on trend with the revenue growth as well. If you look at the margin, of course, uh, this is a company which is offering uh, a kind of special service, uh, which actually allows them to uh, enjoy relatively higher uh, profit margin. If you look at the gross profit margin, it has always been uh, a little bit above 80% for the past three years. And uh, the net profit margin as well is considered what we call a lucrative kind of uh, margin, uh, which is uh, almost uh, within the trend of 20 to 30%. So this is a company which, you know, once they have uh, the existing database, services, information, they just need to convince uh, new clients to sign up and get access to their information. And this is what we call an asset-like business that does not really uh, rely on heavy capex to uh, build uh, heavy uh, extensions or plant extensions to actually grow their business. So it's a very straightforward uh, kind of regulated, uh, yet very uh, effective kind of business model. If you go into the cash flow activities, you will also notice that the uh, cash flow from its uh, operating activities has been also uh, trending up healthily. Uh, you would actually dig deeper and find out that actually uh, the cash from operating activities has been on an uptick because uh, this is the kind of company where they can actually uh, collect, uh, say for example, a subscription fee uh, upfront. Uh, and then allow access for the uh, clients or its customer base. So uh, you will notice that uh, even though the cash flow from activities is on an uptrend, uh, it all ties back to the balance sheet as well, where uh, on the liabilities part, uh, the company actually recognizes and uh, adjusted its contract liabilities upward as well. And of course, uh, if you have a keen eye, you will also notice that how come in the year of 2020, uh, there's so much cash outflow uh, for its investing activities. So in the year of 2020, the company actually uh, actually entered into a very uh, aggressive uh, acquisition uh, spending spree. They actually uh, invested into a few companies by either being uh, associate of it or actually having a little bit of the equity interest. So they actually have a 20% equity interest in BOL and also 51% equity interest in uh, CB, uh, which are the respective Thailand and Philippine credit score and information uh, companies. But of course, uh, CB actually is eventually divested and uh, split out from the CITOS Digital uh, Berhad IPO. Uh, so the actually, you can see right here, uh, the current uh, company structure, only BOL will be actually uh, considered an associate to the CITOS Digital Berhad uh, company that uh, is going to IPO. So take note, if you are going to uh, subscribe to the IPO of CITOS Digital, you're actually going to be buying into the Malaysian uh, business and also a 20% stake into the BOL, which is the Thailand operations it's currently having. So uh, that's it for the company structure. And of course, judging through the uh, IPO expenses 
or the expect or the listing or the so called uh, how are they going to actually uh, use utilize their IPO funds? So a lot of people will be actually be used to defray uh, listing expenses and also uh, earmark for uh, upcoming potential acquisitions and also to pare down their current borrowings as well. And of course, uh, if you go through the current uh, loan profile or borrowing profile uh, and tying back to what they say, uh, the amount of uh, loans that they plan to pay back. So expectedly, around 50% of the loans will be repaid with the IPO funding. So uh, the balance uh, would be around the amount that they will use to defray their list expenses and also earmark for future expansion and acquisitions uh, should the opportunity arise. So I'll pass back to Chun Bing. Uh, what do you think about uh, the company? Uh, is it a company that uh, we should be looking at uh, and considering uh, as an investment opportunity, see, seeing that it's quite a company with a good uh, profit margin uh, is still growing and uh, it's in a space where uh, credit reporting, credit information and credit scores are expected to play an important role uh, for not only banks and also small or medium enterprises to you know, qualify and gauge their customers and consumers. I think just a few key takeaway. Uh, first of all, uh, we have been telling you they are the market leader. I think over 70% they have technically the the veto power to actually tell you uh when i say my score is actually 80 percent it, it means uh it, that's why a lot of uh, customer actually goes to them uh to to get the report before they onboard those merchants so this is one one one, one clear point and then secondly uh whether uh the demand of credit reporting is going to grow in the futures uh i think you should see it from a few uh angle so one of it is uh whether uh, there will be a couple of uh, big player coming in uh, due to the growth of digital bank uh, is something that we should take note because uh, there are a lot of people trying to go into this space, uh, giving out micro loan and whatnot. Uh, then credit reporting is definitely one of the very important things for their risk team to do assessment before giving out the loan. So if you say uh, there are five new digital bank coming in, let's say, uh, Shopee or, or Grab or whatnot coming in, uh, CITOS definitely will be the one uh, that is benefit, get benefited from, from it. And then secondly is also, uh, I mean, thirdly is like what uh, Jupan mentioned before, uh, they are a very lightweight uh, company. Uh, they just need to make sure they connect to more and more data sources uh, and then they don't need to actually buy a very heavy uh, asset to actually maintain the business. So it's a very straightforward business. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, all these things is only focusing into uh, Malaysia and also a little bit of uh, Thailand uh, business, uh, meaning uh, you won't be enjoying the growth from uh, Singapore because uh, they have ceased the subsidiary as part of this IPO practice. Maybe they have planned to actually do uh, a public listing uh, in other countries as well. So whether the growth story of other country will be part of the thing that will be coming for CTOS Digital Berhad, uh, I think we should take a step back and, and observe. But then this really up to you whether uh, you believe in the credit uh, reporting industry will be having a very good growing uh, space uh, in Malaysia uh, region. And then this will be the key de deciding factor uh, in my opinion. Cool, cool, cool. Of course, this... Um... IPO prospectus is still uh, not fully furnished with uh, a lot of information. Say, for example, the uh, IPO proceeds uh, break down on how many percent to actually earmark for expenses, for uh, loan repayment. Uh, it's still very uh, premature because, uh, of course, after reading through the entire prospectus, we managed to piece out uh, different information. If we just look back uh, a few uh, slides back where we actually uh, snapshot the uh, breakdown that the process that they plan to use uh, is still uh, murky. Uh, of course, as time goes by, the uh, prospectors will get furnished with uh, better fun numbers and better figures as well. And of course, the valuation as of right now, uh, what price to IPO at is still also uh, very, very preliminary. Of course, do check out uh, our article as well. We have a more detailed uh, 
write up and analysis on the prospectus. We also link the article link in the description uh, box, and uh, that will also get updated as we uh, get more and more information of this uh, impending IPO uh, of the Malaysian Stock Exchange. And of course, uh, for those who are interested to up or to really, really understand the uh, uh, basis of uh, finding a good dividend stock, uh, we are actually opening back our registration for dividend gems. Uh, and the uh, access fee is actually uh, 488 per pack. So the date is tentatively set at 12 and 13 of June. It will be a two day event. Uh, time, it would be 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And what is inside dividend gems is actually a complete step and criteria to screen out good dividend companies. And we actually split out these uh, steps and criteria into uh, three different uh, categories. So you have your normal companies, your like your telcos, your food manufacturers, your uh, other kinds of uh, normal companies that requires uh, to borrow money, to actually churn up money by selling something or offering some kind of services, right? The second one would be the banks and insurances. Uh, this is a little bit different because they actually uh, run their business by utilizing money from other people. So for example, if you deposit money to the bank, the bank would actually borrow your money out or lend your money out to a borrower and then they earn interest. So different kind of metrics to actually uh, zoom into and study before we actually qualify that these companies are safe to be considered as a stable and growing kind of uh, dividend company. And last but not least, uh, WITS as well. Since WITS is a regulated entity or regulated business model, uh, you also have a separate criteria to actually screen them through of course uh different different kinds of uh, companies in different kinds of uh, uh segments will actually require special metrics and kpis to study them and to uh, screen through them of course if you actually enroll into dividend gems whatever uh, updates or even improvement that we make for the cost will actually uh, get you uh, free for life upgrade. So if we somehow down the road, we find out certain criteria to actually improve the overall uh, screening methodology, you actually get the upgrades and updates uh, without any additional fee. Of course, uh, for whatever we uh, use for the uh, replace and also the sharing, you will also uh, have the access to these materials and video replace as well if you are a premium club member. So that's it for today. Uh, we hope that this exciting company that will be hitting our uh, stock exchange soon uh, will probably encourage you to dig deeper about the business model, uh, the so-called uh, balance sheet, the uh, prospects of the company, the uh, verticals that they plan to uh, grow into and how confident you are uh, in this company into you know, uh, tapping onto the increasing need uh, of credit reporting and credit store uh, score metrics to help uh, not only banks, financial institutions, and also uh, small medium enterprises to improve their business. So uh, what about you, Chumbing? Uh, do you have anything to add on to this company and uh, maybe point our subscribers and watchers to actually dig some imp important information before they actually invest into a company if they want to? I mean, uh, if you... Uh wasn't aware on this company and then you wanted to try out the service. If I'm not mistaken, they offer some free trial so you can get some, uh, maybe not full report, but, but uh, some of the partial report they can get and you will know uh, probably how powerful they are by connecting to multiple data sources. And then the last note uh, to make is, uh, we mentioned they own about 20% in associates uh, in some of the company. One of it is actually experience. So uh, Aspirin is another company you should check out if you are interested in credit reporting industry. They are probably the second largest in Malaysia and also has some link to CITOS. So you can see how uh, powerful they are in terms of the leader market leader uh, standpoint. So this is a few things to take note uh, and to check out uh, as well. So I think uh, that's all for today. Uh, feel free to check out the multiple links in description. If you yep. are interested in, uh, let's say, Kaya, our Kaya Plus Premium Club, uh, the dividend gems, uh, uh, upcoming courses, and so on. Yeah, and also if you have any questions on CTOS, you can also leave them in the comment section. Uh, we will try our very best to answer them and to hopefully uh, give you some, some sort of insights as well if you manage to find them. So that's it for today.
we will see you in our next episode of our not so late night show uh, as always every thursday 9 p.m to 10 p.m so see you in next week's episode bye bye